Understanding physical mechanics in World of Tanks Blitz is something that even good players sometimes don't fully understand. There are a handful of people that I've talked to that are pretty good at the game that don't understand shell normalization, three calibers rule, what the differences between all the rounds are, how AP can actually be a lot better than heat shells as premium rounds. There are many, many differences in the game's mechanics. That I understand if people don't fully understand because it takes a lot of time, effort, and brain power to actually memorize all of the these rules. However, what doesn't take a lot of brain power to memorize is which way the game has spawned you and where you should drive your heavy tank or your medium tank. I cannot tell you how many times I have been on dead rail and my team has had, let's say, two medium tanks. So let's plop two mediums right here at spawn. That's, that's a heavy tank. Two mediums right here at spawn. The enemy team has two medium tanks, and you're in one of the mediums, and your other medium says, you know what, this is where I should go, but instead of going there, I'm gonna drive my tank over to heavy side and sit right here, because, don't you know, that's very productive, or I'm gonna push up to the hill and die instantly. I cannot tell you how many times I play on dead rail, and I watch my medium tank decide, you know what, I'm not gonna push to the spot of the map, I should. Why do that? I wanna be flanked later on in the battle. It's such an infuriating thing, because it doesn't matter what skill level you are, you should understand what is medium side in a game, and what is heavy side in a game. The more impressive part to me is that these players that usually drive the wrong side on the map have 40 to 50,000 battles and still have not learned what is right and what is wrong on where to push on maps. Let's use Nube for an example. This map is quite simple. I've talked about it many times on the channel. All you need to do if you want to win is drive up the bridge. That is as simple as it gets. But every time the heavy tanks spawn in, they decide, you know what? I'm gonna go this way, all the way to the town, and we're gonna lose. And I have a perfect example for you, because I have Blitz open, and I'm gonna show you a replay where Bat Chat begins and I were platooned on New Bay, and you're gonna watch, in 2 minutes and 51 seconds, how quickly my team evaporates, because they decided to go town instead of pushing up the bridge. If you disagree and you say you should push town, this is not an argument. You're just wrong. So, let's watch what happens here. I'm in my TVP 5051. Bat Chat Begins is in a 1-2-1-B. Both very capable and competent medium tanks, able to do well, but you do need a bit of support from your team, because if the enemy team all decides to go up the bridge, guess what's gonna happen to us? Oh yeah, we're gonna die. The issue is, is if the enemy team has a brain cell and they all decide to go up the bridge, you're basically done, because they have the high ground on you, they have spotting on you, and if any of your teammates decides that they want to go to the bridge, it's over. You can see already, I've decided that going to the bridge is a disaster, and I need to leave. Bat Chad is completely stuck there, because the moment he tries to leave, he's going to be shot. So, already I am running away as fast as I can. Oh look, there's the 62A shooting me, the Vicar's Light getting a Hess shell into my rear. I'm already down 800 hit points, but uh, yeah, that's just the beginning of it. My team has still barely pushed anywhere. They've just captured base C, and now they're going to push over towards base D. But look at this. Already the enemy team is over here. So now I'm down basically all of my health. I got a Foss chasing me on the rear. Nothing I can do about that. All right, well, let's just keep on pushing. My team has still not even gotten out of the town yet. Now they're capturing base B. Like, that's really going to help this situation that's going on. Uh, I know that if I try to push towards the bridge, they're all sitting on the bridge, so they're gonna have high ground on me, and there's nothing I can really do about that, especially because the Vicar's Light will outspot me. My 183 misses the 60 TP, although it's not like it would have mattered even if he had penned a Hess shell. And, uh, yeah, this is just, uh, isn't this an exciting battle? Didn't I really have a, a good chance at winning this? Even if I had gone with the team, and instead of going to the bridge, at the beginning with Batchat, and had gone towards base B, and tried flanking behind them, it would not have worked, because all the enemy would have had to simply do is turn around and sit hull down on the bridge. It is that little effort you need to put in. Even if I tried pushing on their rear, I would have gotten one clipped out and then probably rushed by the either Fosh or the whatever, the Vicar's Light, and been killed. Batshed is still alive amazingly, that's the impressive part, but their 60 TPs are both full health. Their Fosh is pretty healthy, they got a full health Vicar's Light. I mean, right now they have seven tanks left and our team is down to four. This is why you push up the bridge on New Bay. Now, if we had pushed up the bridge, I doubt we would have won because, I mean, the skill level of this team seems to be pretty below par. But either way, I'm going to try and get some shells into the 60 TP before I die. So there's two, and let's get that third shell out. There you go. So I was able to deal 2,300 damage 
and it was a 7-0 steamroll. What a fantastic team we had there. Let's take a look at these post-game results and see how our, our team did. Batchat did 600 damage and did third on the team. I did 2,000 damage and did top on the team. The enemy team had the lowest of 1,200 damage, which beats literally everybody but the 268 and only by 20 damage. Their second worst performing player did more than our best. And it's not like all the players on my team are inexperienced because they don't have a lot of games. I mean, yeah, the 183 only has 503 battles, but let's take a look at this object, 263, 53,000 games. What? I mean, let's take a look at the 60 TP, 17,000 battles. Even the object 268 has 7,000 games. It's a bit lower, but that's still plenty to understand, I would think, after 7,000 battles, which way is the correct way to push on a map. I don't really know what to say. How do you have 53,000 games, and the best idea you come up with is to instantly push to the wrong side of the map? I know this video may come off as a bit harsh towards some of you, but honestly, if you're sitting at 20,000 battles and you still don't understand what is the right and what is the wrong way to push on the map, what have you been doing for 20,000 battles? That is multiple days of your life you have spent on this game, and you have not spent one ounce of it actually understanding what is left and what is right on a map. That is pretty sad, my dude. Now, for most of you out there, you're completely fine and I wouldn't worry about it, but this is something that gets me angry because I've played seven thousand battles and I would say over half of the battles I play there's at least one or two people on every team you get that doesn't understand what is the right and what is the wrong way to push black gold bill is another example now I do want to point out that if you only have a couple hundred battles or maybe even a thousand or two thousand you're pretty much in the clear I mean for a lot of the time when you're grinding up tiers you're playing actually on different maps like Mirage and Copperfield on early game before you even get to the newer maps that have been introduced in tier 10 so I do understand for certain people but again, if you're sitting at 20,000, 10,000 battles and you don't understand what is the right way to go, oh boy, you you really get me angry sometimes. So let's take a look at Black Goldville because I got another replay queued up. Now, Black Goldville is a map notorious for heavy tanks saying, ah, yes, I spawned here and I'm facing this way, but my entire team's going this way. Hmm, what should I do? Go with my entire team or ignore them and push into the town. And that is what happens a lot of times. You will see one or two heavy tanks for no reason drive driving in the town, ignoring their entire team, and then when you need those hit points in the battle to support you over on this side of the map, you're absolutely dead. If you ever decide to go town on Black Goldville, you are causing your team to have a decreased chance of winning, and even if you won that battle, it was not because of your decision. I can tell you that. Pushing to the top side of Black Goldville is the only side you should be pushing on this map. Unless you're in a light tank and you want to get a really quick flank off, which I've done occasionally, you should never be pushing into the town on this map, ever. So, let's take a look at the replay and see how well it worked out for the enemy team that decided to push town. Now, as I said, not every tank on their team pushed town. In this battle, I'm using my Grill 15. It took me a long time to really get the Grill playstyle homed in, but once I got it, man, does this tank feel really enjoyable. Because it's so accurate, you can sit right at the back of the map and get so many crazy snaps into enemy opponents, but this isn't a Grill review. You'll just see the crazy snaps as I'll be using the Grill in this replay and getting a pretty hefty chunk of damage out, but the only reason I was able to get a hefty chunk of damage out was because the enemy team's heavies completely threw their battle. The enemy team has an E100, they have an IS-7, two Sheridans in Platoon, a 263, a Grill 15, and a 183. Well, the 183 is usually useless on both teams, so that tank on both sides is already basically out. But let's see, right now, the two Sheridans are in the front line, they're kind of bleeding a lot, but my 121B also bled a lot of hit points already down to 700. This enemy Sheridan is going to try and run away, and I'm going to slap an HE shell right into the turret, finishing him off. All right, that's good news. We've cleared a Sheridan, but wait a sec. Who the hell is in base C? Why is there somebody capturing base C on their team? Well, you'll never guess what it is, but it's the IS-7 and the E-100 capturing base C. Why they are over there and their entire team is over towards A side, the world may never know. I really don't know how you could possibly think, first of all, that driving towards town is a smart idea, but how ditching your entire team is even a smarter idea. So here we go, we're gonna get one shell into the E100, nice, we're sitting up to 1200 damage, 
and they're already screwed. I mean, their heavies cannot move, and that's that's the end of the enemy team's game. But let's let's keep on watching what happens here. So we got the grill backing up, obviously, because he has no support from his heavies. I'm able to shoot him, max roll him, although he wasn't running spall liner. You should be. We were able to get an 1100 damage roll on that guy. Now the Sheridan knows. Oh crap, my heavies are over here. What am I going to do? Well, really what you're going to do is have no support and bleed 600 health to me because you can't run anywhere else. Flossie's in the light tank. He's going to YOLO in as well and try and clear some people. I mean, already their team is completely done. They're they're down to Sheridan, they're down to Grill, and the vehicles like the heavies that should be taking shots for them, oh well, one of them's capturing base B, and the other one is uh, sitting next to Rock. I, I don't know what to say. They've captured two bases. Unfortunately, those two bases aren't going to help them, judging that we are already up 100 points on base cap. Here we go, shoot a shell. Ah, Girl's gun is really accurate, and then sometimes it's not really accurate. But either way, here comes the 100 pushing up. Maybe we can get a shell into him. I don't know. We're just chilling here. We're seeing what we can do. They're almost up to our base cap number. Wow, isn't that crazy? Here we go, aiming in a shell in the 100. Easy shot, 500 damage. Unfortunately, Fossey kind of gets stuck there, so he gets cleared. But good news is that their Sheridan is dead. Oh, here we go again. Another shell into the E100. Thank you very much for your hit points. I need one more shot, and this E100 is dead. Even though he penetrates me with a high explosive shell, he's going to be dead. I mean, this is the end of his battle here. So we're going to load in a heat shell, and uh, goodbye. Thank you very much for your 516 hit points. I'm down to 399 hit points myself, and all they have left is an IS-7. Imagine, in a world where that IS-7 and E-100, instead of capturing bases, decided to go towards the heavy side. This team wasn't great. I mean, our 121B is a one-shot, our 4005 is a one-shot for the E-100, I'm a one-shot, the only tank on our teams that's actually healthy is the IS-7. If either of those the heavies were actually somewhat competent on just where the drive, they could have won that battle, but they didn't. That's what's sad. So here we go. Let's get a nice snap into the side of that IS-7. Now we're up to 5,945 damage. And I'll skip it a little bit ahead so we can show the final shot. I did 6,650 damage. And there you go. This game could have been a win for the enemy team. And even though my team did pretty well, it showcases again how stupidity is what causes you to lose almost every battle. These Sheridans had basically no chance because their heavies didn't cover them. So even though they're both decent players, 52% win rate and 50 6% win rate, their heavies didn't support them, so they took a big fat L. The Grill had no heavy supporting him, he's a 51% or not a bad player, took a big fat L. But you know who does have a decent chunk of battles? Oh yeah, this IS-7 with 9,200 games played, with a 54% win rate, and yet you still don't understand what is right and what is left on a battlefield. Incredible. The U100, I'm given a pass because he only has 1,700 battles, but even then, the U100 seemed more competent than the IS-7 because at least he knew what HE ammunition was. So... I, I really just don't know what to say. This game gets me quite irritated. I mean, at least they're not this VK-72 dealing one damage in that battle, because that's that's pretty impressive. Dealing one damage is harder than dealing zero, multiple times harder. But either way, uh, I just wanted to make this video. This isn't the only maps that this happens on. I mean, there are hundreds of battles that I play on multiple different maps. Alpenstadt, when, you're, when your mediums decide, oh yeah, I don't want to go uh, medium route. Let's go heavy route and get flanked behind. Mayan Ruins. I mean, I could just go onto the list of maps and probably name all of them. Middleburg. There are so many maps. And it is incredible to see how each time you play in these maps, like Faust, your heavies decide to go into the town instead of supporting the mediums. Please understand how to play this game. There are so many people that have so many battles and do not get it. And this is something that needs to be talked about because I'm sick and tired of dealing with people that are actually decent on win rate, not understanding how to play this game. Hopefully you enjoyed today's video and I'll be seeing you in the next one. Bye-bye.